Remember this no fingerprint laptop that I showed you a while back with the new AMD Ryzen AI9 chipset? Well, it is now available to buy and I've been using it for over a month and I've partnered with ASUS to share with you my experience with it so far and why this is such a big deal for x86 laptops, great performance, but at half the power draw. This is a big deal, so let's talk about it. So let's start with the design. Even though I've been using this for a while, I'm still blown away every time that I use it. I am serious. This is one of the nicest laptops that I've used in a long time and the build quality and design is so solid on this. And the Scandinavian white colorway looks absolutely stunning on the ZenBook S16. The top of this laptop is what ASUS is calling Sarah Aluminum. This ceramic aluminum process gives it a really interesting texture and feel and it makes it very resistant to fingerprints so I really love this. And so far it seems to be good with light spills so I appreciate this all metal build. The hinge feels great opening up to this nice and color accurate 120Hz 16 inch 3K touchscreen OLED display. There is an absolutely huge trackpad with tons of gestures which I'll get to in a bit and the excellent keyboard with the right amount of travel make this one of the most well-rounded laptops that I've used so far this year. This thing is also very thin, especially since it has a huge 16 inch display. But check this out, it doesn't skimp out on ports. It has a full size HDMI 2.1 port, two USB 4 type C and a combo audio jack. And on the other side, you get a USB 3.2 gen 2 type A port and a full size SD card slot. So this is perfect for photographers and content creators. I also love this ASUS logo in the upper right side and these complicated CNC machine grill holes just give it that high end touch. So the design is A plus. If you want to see more of the hardware, then check out my first look video. You can watch that after this one. But today I want to touch on some of the more everyday things because that's what I couldn't talk about before because that was a pre-production unit. And I also want to compare it a little bit to the Asus VivoBook S15, which I took a look at last month with the Snapdragon X Elite chip. And I know a lot of videos that you might have seen already. That was with the high-end Ryzen AI HX370 processor that comes with 12 cores with the higher clock speed at 5.1 gigahertz and 32 gigabytes of RAM with the Radeon 890M graphics, which comes in at $300 higher that only comes in that slick gray color. But I will be covering the lower end Ryzen AI 9 365, which is a 5 gigahertz 10 core variant with slightly smaller cache, Radeon 880M graphics, and 24 gigabytes of RAM with the one terabyte SSD. So I think this one is the most interesting because this is the best bang for a buck spec that you can get and it's readily available at Best Buy. So I'll leave that link down below just in case you want to check it out. Plus, you never know when you can catch this thing on sale. Before I jump into some gaming and performance, I want to talk more about what the experience has been like in the last month or more using this laptop. First is security. This laptop does not have a fingerprint scanner, but it does have Windows Hello, which is my favorite way of getting into the laptop. It is so fast and easy. The display is a perfect size for me. It is a large 16 inch 3K OLED display and it looks great. Nice color accuracy with deep blacks and it's 120 Hertz as well. So it's nice and fluid. I know that some people might complain because it's not high res enough and I get that to a certain degree but I don't think you'll be disappointed even if you're using this for content creation. I am just getting into DaVinci Resolve. Yes, I'm a Mac and Final Cut Pro user as well, so I'm slowly trying to learn more NLEs to gauge PC performance and to give me some more flexibility while traveling. And I found it to be a great display and it has just the right amount of peak brightness. I do wish that it got a tiny bit brighter, but I found it adequate for outdoor use and it has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so web browsing and productivity is on point. Now this one I wasn't sure about when it got announced, but having gestures on a trackpad is much more useful than I thought it would be. For example, if you want to turn up the volume, just swipe up or down on the left side. And then if you want to control the brightness, just use the right side. And if you want to rewind or move forward on the content that you're watching, just swipe across the top. I think this is really clever. And watching content on this is a good experience as well. With the six speakers, it sounds better than most laptops that are this thin. Now I did find the bass to be better if you turn off the Dolby Atmos, especially when listening to music, but the ASUS software makes this so easy to customize depending on what you're doing, so I appreciate that. The keyboard, as I mentioned, has just the right amount of travel. It does feel a little bit soft for everyday typing for me, but you will have no problems with it. And yes, it is backlit. Looks really clean with the white backlighting. When you're doing everyday tasks, you'll probably never hear the fan because this thing is super quiet, so no problems there. And the laptop stays cool with everyday computing, so that is great. And even on the highest fan setting, it's not loud at all. If anything, I found this laptop to be very conservative when it comes to fan speed, so it can get pretty hot before the fans even kick on. So make sure you adjust the profile accordingly, especially if you're gaming. While I was running the benchmarks, I noticed that the fans weren't really loud at all, but I definitely felt it on my lap. So here are the benchmarks if you're curious. This is the Geekbench score with the laptop plugged in, so solid numbers for the entry level model. And here's the score on the battery, so you can see the difference of what you're going to get. 
Here is the Cinebench R24 score, so it's over 800 on multi-core, which isn't bad at all. And on single core, it's up there with the Apple M1 Silicon, so that's where this chipset is at. The GPU on OpenCL without being plugged in on Geekbench, it was above 28,000, but with it plugged in, I got slightly above 30,000, so the score is almost the same plugged or unplugged, so that is not bad for integrated graphics. The AMD Ryzen AI 9 processor has a built-in NPU which is capable of 50 tops, so the AI race is definitely on. This has a dedicated co-pilot key on the keyboard and it works exactly like I expected. I generated images and I asked it a lot of questions and it worked really well. And you can see that MPU at work with a lot of the Windows Studio effects like portrait blurs and it's really quick. And there's also a live captions feature where it will transcribe any video or content that you're watching. So this is a great way to implement AI for a practical feature. I think I'm gonna say what a lot of you are thinking out there. I think we're still waiting for those killer killer features to be utilized in the MPU when it comes to AI but just know that when those features get released, this laptop is ready for it. I think the big deal with this laptop is what the Ryzen AI 9 processor is doing for Windows PCs, especially with traditional x86 architecture. If this is all Greek to you, that's okay because there are a new wave of PCs that are being powered by the ARM architecture like you've seen with the Snapdragon X Elite processor and that is bringing efficiency and power like we've never seen on Windows laptops before. So this is a big shakeup. We are talking about laptops with 18 to 20 plus hours of battery life and almost full power when unplugged. So laptops Laptops like the Asus VivoBook S15 have seen a significant bump, but this does come with some hurdles because at this time you may run into some optimization issues or compatibility issues when it comes to some creative programs and even gaming. So x86 doesn't have these problems, so I think this is where AMD is providing that perfect middle lane. The big draw for the consumer is that you're getting the performance that you're used to, but it's drawing roughly half the power while doing so. And while this configuration isn't groundbreaking when it comes to raw CPU power, but getting that type of performance with this type of efficiency is huge. And I also saw a big improvement in standby time. And while it might not be as impressive as the Snapdragon X Elite chips, I closed the laptop at night. And when I woke up in the morning, I was down about three to 5% on battery. So that's really good. Now, in terms of battery life, you're going to get a nice bump up here as well. I've seen a few tests where this laptop can go 11 to 11 and a half hours on video playback before it dies. But in my real world use, I'm getting between 9 to 10 hours on a single charge with mixed use. So this is significantly better than the x86 laptops that I've tested in the past. There have been more than a few BIOS, software, and driver updates since I've had this. And this has gotten continually better since I first unboxed it. The one downside that I've come across is the compatibility with my Wi-Fi 7 router. It works perfectly with Wi-Fi 6, but I can't get full speeds on Wi-Fi 7, so let me know if you've come across that. But I just got a software update with MediaTek Wi-Fi drivers, and I'm happy to say that the speed still isn't full, but it's gotten much better, and it has helped with the stability of the Wi-Fi connection. So to round this out, I had to test the GPU. I did show you the Geekbench scores earlier, but I did run Night Raid on 3D Mark, which is a direct X12 benchmark for integrated graphics, and it did well there. So I tried a few games on this. I was absolutely blown away by the performance on Doom Eternal. I know this isn't the most graphically demanding game, but it's a good benchmark, and I was able to run this on full resolution. Yes, the native resolution, and still get between 40 and 60 frames per second, and that is really great for an integrated GPU so this is totally playable and it looks super crisp on this 3k display and if you drop this to 1080p then it is incredibly fluid with very solid frame rates so for reference this is performing better than the VivoBook S15 did with the Snapdragon X Elite so this GPU is more powerful. Of course, I had to test Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this I was trying to push to full resolution, but unfortunately it was unplayable. But if you drop it down to 1080p, then it's more than playable on this resolution with the medium graphics setting. So again, this is impressive for an integrated GPU. So casual gaming is definitely a go on this laptop. The last game that I tested was Street Fighter 6, and sometimes this is difficult on integrated graphics. And I did try 1080p on this, and while it is playable, it's floating between 40 and 50 frames per second you can feel the slowdown but this looks very crisp at this resolution but if you just tack it down one notch the resolution not quite 720p it is locked in at 60 frames per second so this is definitely doable so what I'm loving about these new thin and light laptops that gaming years ago wasn't even a thought on them and now you can casually game even unplugged let's say on an airplane or anywhere you want which is incredible so even the lower end AMD 880M is pretty legit when it comes to GPU performance so 
Overall, I think if you're looking for one of the slickest looking, super thin laptops that has power and efficiency with no real compromises, I think this is it. I can almost guarantee that once you see one of these, you're going to fall in love with the design and build quality and the performance matches. So I think this is a good choice. So let me know what you think of this laptop and where AMD is going in the future. I can't wait to see more Asus and AMD laptops because the competition is heating up. And with Qualcomm and Intel leveling up, this means this is great for us. We win as consumers and I can't wait for the future of laptops. This is going to be great. I'll see you guys in the next one.